Hello you lovely Mario Maker person, my name is Steve and welcome back. Breath of the Wild will be released in exactly 22 days and the long wait for the next 3D Zelda will finally come to an end. I'm already really hyped and can't wait to get my hands on the new Zelda. So in celebration of the upcoming launch, let's take a look on some ideas on how to create Zelda themed levels in Super Mario Maker. So you ready? Let's do this! In our first idea, Link finds himself in a random spot in the middle of Hyrule. The path to the left is blocked by an enormous tree and the path to the right is accessible, but there are horrible munchers living and he can't proceed there either. Luckily, there is this ancient pipe in the middle of the screen. This pipe does not warp Link between places like pipes do in Mario games, no. This pipe warps Link thousands of years back in time. The path to the right is now blocked, but at a place where in thousands of years a proud tree will be, there is only a small sapling now and Link can walk right past it, towards a huge dark tower. But Link can't proceed here either. Hmm. If he only was able to pick up this Goomba shoe, his life would become so much easier. This question block contains a vine, but this doesn't help Link in any way either. Maybe he needs to travel back to the future. With his new knowledge about this question block, he is able to climb on top of the tree. On the other tree side, he finds the tower from before, but the tooth of time seems to have destroyed this once magnificent building and our hero is able to climb through the ruins towards another time travel pipe, which leads him directly to the ancient Goompa Shu. Together with his new gadget, Link is now able to make progress in the future at the place where the munchers live. The boss key is hidden here as well, but Link can't reach it currently as a bumper flower grew directly on top of it. Hmm, if there was only a way to reach this key. Hooray! Now Link only has to solve this last puzzle by jumping out of his holy shoe towards a power block and he's finally able to enter this strange tower. But what Link doesn't know is that inside this tower a horrible creature lives. It's a dangerous, huge spider. Link has no chance to kill this beast. Luckily, the shoe he found earlier proves to be useful for him once again as it allows him to stand on top of this spider-like creature and to trigger a power block, which opens the path to the exit door. In our next idea, Link finds himself on the Mushroom Kingdom Cemetery. There is this old grave which can be entered, but our wielder of the Master Sword needs to find the key first. The only creature which might carry a key here is this dry bone, but he is in an unreachable spot. Luckily, there are the skeleton roller coasters at the ground, which do not only provide additional details to this area, but can be used to force the dry bone out of his hiding place as well. Now, Link only needs to find a way to kill this dry bone, as he isn't able to use his sword in Mario Maker and jumping on top of it doesn't kill it. But this shouldn't be a problem for a hero either, as he noticed these clouds before. All that Link has to do is to jump on top of these clouds in order to activate a skewer, which is hidden out of sight. This skewer will destroy the clouds and drop the chain jump poles directly on the poor dry bone, granting Link the key during this process. Let's take a look on some smaller but useful contraptions for Zelda levels. If you're creating a Zelda themed stage, you'll probably want to use locked doors, which only open once Link does something specific. Here for example, the door is locked until Link hits this question block. This door stays closed until Link activates this blue platform. Here Link is only able to proceed if he triggers this P-switch, as this forces some bullet blasters out of sight to drop down. Here Link can't reach this power block. But if he climbs up on this vine, a skewer out of sight gets activated once again and forces this spring to drop down onto a shell. Here we use the fact that triggering a question block forces cannons attached to it to fall down in order to destroy this pop omp. And here triggering this P-switch activates a question block. There are three pipes containing springs stacked on top of each other. But sometimes you also want to trap Link in an area as soon as he enters it. A neat little design for a door that closes behind Link is this little one-way door form contraption. But this contraption comes with a downside. There is no way to exit the area again once Link entered it. 
If you want to create a door, which closes as soon as Link walks through, but is reopenable, you can use a design like this one. And now, Link finds himself in the middle of the fire dungeon. If Link walks to the right, he sees that his path is blocked by a bob -omp. Luckily, this piranha plant ignites this bob -omp, which does waste a little bit of his time, but also teaches him that piranha plants are able to ignite bob -omps. As soon as the bob -omp is gone, he'll probably try to reach these coins, activating a Boboba fireball during this process. Now, this pipe is able to spawn P-switches. Link can't proceed here currently. Maybe the P-switch changed something in the area before. It did. Now two springs drop from the ceiling, making it possible for Link to reach this platform. All that Link has to do now is to escort the platform to its final destination, as this will place a piranha plant in front of the final bob -omp and grants him access to the item of the dungeon. But what will the item of the dungeon be? Well, it's the Spike Helmet, which has been passed from generation to generation in the royal family of Hyrule. This extraordinary item does not only protect Link's head against threats from above, no, it also grows him a mustache. All that Link has to do now is to find the hidden boss key together with his new headgear. But as it turns out, finding the boss key is no easy task. There is a hidden area at the top of the screen, but the key isn't hidden there. Hmm, it looks like he missed something. Have you already figured out where the key is? Well, it's inside this Pobobo fireball, which Link can now kill thanks to his magical spiked helmet. So Link is finally able to enter the boss door. The boss in this dungeon is a terrifying dry bone Koopa dragon. Not only does this creature spit fire, but there is fire shooting out of its body as well. If Link wants to defeat this boss, he needs to jump towards it using the item he found in this place. If he loses his special helmet, he can always regain a new one to the left. Once the boss died, Link is rewarded with another key and able to leave the dungeon. But Zelda themed levels don't always need to be built in super complex areas where Link has to do several things at once in order to proceed. Here for example, Link only has to solve some small and easy puzzles one by one. The first puzzle is solved by finding this little question block, so that the piranha plant is transported to another area and blasts him the way open. This next little puzzle is even easier. Link needs to find a way to kill this muncher and there is a power block hidden at a blue platform at the top. Link only needs to find a way to reach this platform so that the power block drops into his reach. Luckily there is a spring hidden to the left and destroying the brick block below transports it directly on top of the other spring. For this last little puzzle, Link needs to trigger this P-switch at the top. Sadly for him, the P-switch is so high in the air that he can't jump on it from below. But there was a vine growing from the ceiling a little bit earlier in this stage and if Link climbs on top of it, he finds a hidden path towards the P-switch. Hooray! Now Link is in an enormous tower, somewhere in the clouds. The exit pipe is once again blocked by a muncher and he needs to find a power block in order to escape. Luckily for him, this puzzle is super easy as well. If he triggers the invisible blocks on tracks here, the bullet blaster is lifted into the air and drops on the head of this little innocent Goomba who holds a key. This key can be used to unlock this locked door, which drops Link back to this place, but this time together with a power block. Wow, that was really easy. I always thought dungeons in the clouds come towards the end of a Zelda game and they're tougher. Oh. But it looks as if this wasn't the whole puzzle, because Link still lacks the key to enter the next tower. Hmm, he probably missed something. Let's head back. Of course, there are these vines to the right and left which Link can climb up. The vine to the left leads him to a small little hidden room, but there is nothing in this room. All that Link sees from here is a Monty Mole trying to hurt but unable to reach him. Maybe the other vine leads him to a useful area. That's weird. The other vine leads him to the bottom of the area he just visited. But wait a moment, if Link collects a coin, he accidentally activates a hidden block as well. Does this help him? Of course it does. If Link re-enters the area from before now, the Monty Mole will try to chase Link again. But this time he will run directly in a cannon crusher instead of Link, giving Link the key he lacked. And that's it for today and for Zelda themed levels. I hope you enjoyed this little video. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave me a thumbs up and maybe you feel especially tingled today and want to hit the subscribe button as well. 
I hope you have a wonderful day and to see you soon. Goodbye.